Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to create a reinforcement learning based control system using the specification of a step response simulink block. In control system, usually you want to control a measured variable, change it from one value to another. And this happens in the physical world usually when things are analogous and contiguous, that uh, things change gradually. For example, you want to change the position of the arm of a robot from one position to another, changing the speed of it. You want to change the temperature of a room from one temperature to another. You want to change the flow of gasoline in a car from zero to a, a certain flow level. Or you want to uh, change the angle of the spoilers in the wings of an airplane. Or you want to change uh, the water level of a tank from one point to another, which is the example that is going to be used in here. In all these examples, uh, a value continuously change from one point to another, as is shown in this graph. So in this case, we want to take the water level from one to two. In the specification, indicate the time it takes to rise. This cannot happen immediately. In the physical world, things are continuous. It cannot happen immediately. And the, the fastest it, it, it is done, the most more expensive is the control system. So that's the job of the control system engineer. Basically, if given some specifications of how fast you want to change this value, make the cheapest, uh, less uh, energy consuming uh, control system. So that's the purpose of this specification, how fast you want it to change. So this is the rise time, the time to take to rise, the time it takes to stabilize, and the level of stability that you want to achieve. If you want to make a cheaper controller, you want to increase, uh, you don't want uh, the percentage of stability, you can increase, you can increase the settle time, the rise time, if you want to make it cheaper, if you want to make it more expensive, you can uh, decrease those those limits. So, okay, uh, let's do this example. To do it, you have to, this is the article that I put in the description of this video, you just have to click on open live script. That'll take you to here, and first we have to declare some variables in the base workspace that I'm showing here. So A, B, and A are the parameters of the physical model of the water tank. The heights are going to be 1 and 2, so we're taking the height of the water tank from 1 to 2. And the sample time is going to be 0 0.1 seconds, and final time 10 seconds. And this is the model that we're using, so we're going to open it and take a quick look at it. So you see here in this model, we're going to make this the reinforcement learning environment based on Simulink again. And as always, you're going to see the reinforcement learning block red because it refers to the agent variable which is in the base workspace that is not there yet because we haven't created it yet so you have the physical model of the water tank system which uses basically an integrator block and this is the the input the action the action is going to be pos possibly the voltage or the flow it might be the voltage so these are the parameters that we just put in the base workspace for this physical model and the output is going to be the height of the water tank so the height is going to be compared against the reference height this is the height where you want to take it and that error is going to be fit as part of the observations in addition to the previous uh, uh, the previous uh, ref uh, desired height of the, of the water tank which are five of them. So there's a total of six elements for the water tank, for the observation. Okay. So you ha also have the reward and the signal to determine if the agent, uh, the environment uh, finishes or not. We're gonna take a look at it. Okay, let's take a look at the termination signal and you can see that if you go beyond the desired uh, height or you are below the the initial height then uh, that's going to be a termination signal and that is going to be fed to the agent to terminate the the episode in the reinforcement learning simulation training and also it's fed for the reward and the reward is also fed to the agent and the reward you can see that it's going to have a big penalty for early termination because of overflow or underflow and the reward is the main reward the non-terminal reward is going to come from this function so this is a function that we're going to generate from the specification so 
you can see that the inputs are the the height and the current time the, those are going to be the the height of uh, the water level and that height is the actual height so the reward is going to be based on the actual height okay so the reward function uh, is going to be created from the water response so this is where the specification comes this is a step response block that I mentioned a moment ago so here's the block and you can see that uh, if, if you double click on the graph then you get the actual number specification for, for that is going to change this and you can see it in here so you have the initial value which is 1, the final value which is 2 the rise time which is this time, the time to rise is 2 the setting time for stability is 5 and the rise percentage is 80 percent and you can with these parameters you can specify how stable the control system is going to be okay now that we have that block and now we're going to create the agent we're going to create the reward first create the environment and then create the agent and we have all of this ready to simulate and see if our control system works okay so let's go back here the first step is to get the water level step response which is this block we're going to get the path of it and store it into this workspace variable and we already saw it so we're not going to open but we're going to call this function this function is from the reinforcement learning toolbox you can see the path in here rl rl th that is from reinforcement learning toolbox and we're going to create it but first notice that the example already has this function in here the generated reward which is the one that the MATLAB function block is referring to so I'm going to keep it here so that it can be used as a reference when we generate it so we use this command generate reward function and we pass the path to the block of the step, step response so let's run it and I will see a MATLAB function being generated and you can see if you compare uh, both of them let's switch back and forth you're going to see that they're almost identical but there are some changes for example uh, you can see the block x in here that was taken away in here but there are also some changes that the documentation points to for example in here you can see that the exterior penalty function is going to use tap but uh, the example changes to quadratic not only that uh, the weight is set to 1 here but it is changed to 10 so but the final reward is returned in this function you can see that the weight is multiplied by the penalty that is computed based on the block all these parameters that uh, comes from from the input which is going to be the height of the water tank so basically the, the point is that uh, this reward function that is generated from the step you can uh, you can modify if you want or you can leave it as is either way uh, you have to put it into the MATLAB function block so that you can refer it to as I showed uh, I'm going to show quickly again let's look at the model so you go here the MALA function just call it uh, put the inputs the same inputs that the reward function expects and return the reward and the reward is eventually fed into the agent and that's it okay so let's keep going and now uh, yeah we already did that so as mentioned before we have a total of six observations the previous five desired a uh, reference height and the error between the reference height and the actual height and the action is going to be what a uh, the could be the voltage again it could be the voltage or it could be the level of the of the tank i mean the the flow of water or something like that is to it's basically a scalar to control the water tank level okay so we're going to create the observation and the action and now the reinforcement learning agent you have to specify the path we have the path to the actual agent we have the model the agent the observations and the actions and with that we use the rl simulink m function to create the reinforcement learning environment so the next step is to create the actor so to create the actor we first uh, we're going to use a td3 there's other videos uh, giving more details of how the td3 agent works it's pretty effective when the observation and action space are both contiguous so for the it's going to have an actor to actually it has two it could be two or more actors and uh, sorry uh, critics 
So in this case, there are going to be two critics, and we're uh, and this TDA 3D agent uses Q value functions for the critics and a contiguous deterministic actor for yeah for the actor. Okay, so yeah, the the network is pretty common. It's basically an interleaved, rare and fully connected layers, and the input is observation. You concatenate the path of the observation and the path of the actions, and the final value is the scalar, which is the expected reward for uh, the given an observation and actions. Okay, so we just basically connect those layers, and now we can take a look at the network. Using the analyze network function, we can observe the critic network that we just created, and we can see it in here. You can see that it has the observation path with six elements, 128 features from the observation path. Then the the action path has one element, but then also ha only has eight features. You get concatenation in the first dimension, so you have uh, 128 my eight plus eight is 136 features then you go on for with fully connected layers relu until you go down to the one the scalar at the end for the expected rewards and then we're going to create the dl network the dl network is needed for training so we st cr start creating a, a set of layers and from the layers we go to the dl network but we don't want to initialize it because we want to create two instances of it and we don't want them to share the weights. So then we use this method, this this call as a function, but it's really a method of the network to initialize. And then that'll, that'll give us two different networks when we it's time we initialize, initialize it. Two different networks with different weights. And that is gonna be fed to a Q value function to create a Q value function for, which is the critic for the agent. We have to pass the interface of the reinforcement learning environment, which is the, the observations and the actions. So here with this, we have a couple of critics. Let's take a look at one of them. So you can see here, that's the interface, and internal is going to have the network. The actor is more simple. It's basically taking the observations uh, as input, and the output is going to be the action that controls the water tank level. OK, so let's take a look at the actor. And you can see it in here, it's pretty simple. Six observations and goes down to the action, interleaving a fully connected layers and relu. And again, we have to create the DL network for training. And for the actor, we're gonna get create a continuous deterministic actor using this function. And if you see the documentation of TD3, you're gonna see that these are the two recommended functions to create the actor and critic. The RL continuous deterministic actor and the Q value function that we use for the critic. So again, you pass the interface observations, the action, and then the network. And now we have the actor. Okay. Yeah, so just execute this without this one so we can see what we're getting. You can see, yeah, we have the actor and critic. Now we're gonna create the options for the T3 agent. The discount factor is basically uh, to reduce the reward as time goes by to make the, the control system to be as fast as possible. The experience buffer for the T3 is going to be 1 million experiences and the batch size 256. This is very usual configuration for the agent. And for the exploration, to encourage the reinforcement learning agent to explore the state space, we're going to put a standard deviation of 0 0.5, which is going to be dropped to 0. And this is the rate at which it's going to be dropped uh, to 0 eventually. Now we have the options for the agent. We have the two critics and the actor, so we can create our TD3 agent. And now you're gonna see it in the base workspace. You, you can see it in here. Now, if we update the model, you're gonna see that it's not red anymore because it's gonna find the agent in the base workspace. Not only that, we also can simulate this but it is not trained yet so we expect the worst because it's not trained mm -hmm. so you can see that uh, it doesn't make the target and it's pretty bad so that's the purpose of training that's why we're going to train now so for training we specify normal options a uh, average reward so when it reaches a uh, negative five 
eh, for 20 straight eh, eh, for 20 straight ep ep eh, episodes then we're gonna eh, go fine eh, it's gonna eh, we're gonna finish training and it takes eh, three hours eh, no no sorry three minutes so we're gonna train it rather than use the same one but the eh, I I have tried this uh, a, a few times and usually doesn't perform well when so I'm gonna try to increase it a little bit the reward instead of being negative five let's go something like negative three so to see if we if I get better results this time so now I have the training option I got the environment and I got the agent so using the train function the same function as always I'm gonna launch the training and last time it took about three minutes to finish uh, training so since I raised the the reward to a higher level it might, it might take a little bit more so let's see what happens yeah it started training as always it started very bad and eventually it should be close to negative three as I set it up okay finished training uh, actually I tried this a couple of times and it gave me an average reward of negative 30 a little bit more than uh, less than negative 30 and then I tried from the scratch running from the scratch and got negative 30 so the second time when I tried from the scratch I retrain it again change the optimization options and let it go through 300 although you can see that it arrived to 67 and it finished training at 67 because uh, I decreased the reward, expected reward to negative seven, uh, and increase the number of episodes. So basically, if it if it if it doesn't achieve the goal that you wanted to achieve, maybe you can run train it again on top because uh, when you train it for a second time, uh, it's basically training on top of it. So it uh, basically took me a total of 100 runs in the first round and then 67 of the second. So it was a total of 67, 167 episodes. So yeah, you can keep it training until it achieves uh, the goal that you wanted to. So now that it's trained, let's simulate to see how the control system looks. So I have the modeling here and let's take a look at this, which is gonna give me the, so let's just hit control T or hit this one see how it goes so you can see it's almost perfect so probably probably if, if i will had let the reward neg to negative three or negative something or negative two or something like that then it will have a uh, reach this point so i in my machine i will have to let it run it more to get into into a hit the mark uh, because you can see uh, the in the article that it trained in three minutes, 68 episodes, and it had a, an average reward of negative two. So he, uh, for some reason, his machine hit it better. But I guess if I would train it for longer, it would have gotten in there. Okay, so I'm loading loading the agent that he trained and see how it behaves uh, with the with the train agent from from the article. So let's run it, and you can see that it's perfect now. Okay, so that had a better reward. Okay, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.